You remember Australia's great red wave, don't you? The red wave that was taken off of the great sandy desert, blown out into sea. and slammed back into her own coast. Wreaking havoc once it reached the shore. This is the mimic map for January 11th, 2013. I wanted to come back to this map today because there are so many anomalies on it. Um, and this is the day the great huge sandstorm wave hit Australia from the ocean. I want to show you all the TTA activity going on in this map. There is so much going on, it's just going to boggle your mind. It's called acoustic levitation. You can levitate just about anything you want to with ultrasound. This man is levitating pearls with sound. And if he can levitate as many items as he wishes on this small of an acoustic plane, imagine what we can do in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Indian Ocean, around Australia, in the Pacific. We can even cause water to levitate as much as we want. All it takes is the right amount of frequency and the right number of frequency emitters. That's all it takes. Now we can do so much more with sound, with liquid in fluid situations than you would ever believe possible. This is magnetic liquid. Sound is causing it to be magnetic. You can sculpt it in any fashion you wish. And if you think I'm kidding, just watch. We can cause liquid and particulates in the air which have a liquid quality when they become conductive to do just about anything. I know this is creepy but keep watching. It is amazing what we can do with frequency and, and this is just one of the little things that we can do with frequency. This isn't the big stuff. Turn the frequency off, it loses conductivity, and it's normal again. But just like our atmosphere, this has been prepared with metallic particulates. And when you prepare the atmosphere with metallic particulates, you can do anything with it with sound. Just like we're doing here. This is how the particulates in that cloud obeyed those who were manipulating it with sound. Stop emitting the sound. The fluidity loses cohesion and it falls into the sea. This picture of the sandstorm that's coming right at the Australia coast is very illustrative of what I'm trying to say. Here, first of all, we find one, two, three tiers, and there's another tier above that one, as we will see in another picture. Four different tiers of cloud structures. The sun is over to the right, over here. 
but there is a glaring glow where there should be shadow. Everything else is shadowed, but where there should be more shadow than anything else, there is a great glow. You can also see the reflection of it in the water, and you can tell it's not from the sun because there is no reflection that goes that direction to a sun. It is only the reflection from this great blazing hotness here that's reflected up onto the cloud structure above it and another tier that has a great glow in it that is reflected on the cloud structure above it and above it it's dark and above that one it's dark and if the sun was over here all of that would have been the same color. Here again, we have a light source coming out from between the clouds. That would not happen in nature. The sun is way over to this right side, remember. And there is a white source right here, only one place in between the clouds, not shining on all the clouds, not shining above the clouds and shadowing over the clouds because this one goes higher. No, it's a light source that comes from inside that cloud. That light source is heat, and it's created acoustically with sound frequency. Here again, we have another picture of that, and this is separated between the clouds. This is not one great cloud uh, all together. It's separated. The tiers are separated. And here it's further into another place and yet there's a light source up in here between the clouds. And it goes back into the clouds. But the light source is between the clouds. This is a dark cloud above. The light source is shining off the dark cloud above and yet not on the dark cloud above. It's not brightening up the dark cloud above from above it. There's a great chasm between the two clouds. This is sonic sculpturing at its finest. At its most amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you can see, here is the sun over here, just as we saw before, to the right of the cloud. and. Even now, you can see this light source in the middle of the cloud. This picture is one of the best pictures that illustrates what I'm saying. Here we have the first dust cloud. This is where the dust is. Then we have the second tier, and the third tier, the fourth tier, and there's even a lighter tier above that. So there's actually five tiers of clouds. This dust cloud acts as though it is attracted to this cloud here. The dust cloud itself is excited. It's hot. Its uh, undulation is going through it, as you can see the undulation in the clouds, going through this cloud and causing it to be excited. And it's, uh, it is attracted to this cloud here. I maintain the reason is because of polarization. But this cloud has its own polarization and it is repelling this cloud to a lesser extent, extent and repelling this cloud to a lesser extent and is causing heat between this cloud and that cloud and you can see the reflection of the heat that's being created sonically 
above this cloud onto this one. This is an amazing structure. This, it's awesome what they did here, but it's terrible what they did here too. They took a piece of of Australia, picked it up in to the sky, and threw it back at Australia. And they did it through ultrasonic levitation. There are TTAs all over the world that could help in this process. Air, land, space, and sea. In the sea and on top of the sea. Arrays like this one, right there at the same coast that it hit. Here it is hitting land, and again, there is a heat source here. A light source, a heat source, right there. Here is a TTA northeast, and it could very well have been one of the originators of the the extremely bizarre uh, anomalies that we saw in Mimic on the map. It's an amazing TTA structure. It's the Pratis Island Hydroacoustic TTA System. And I knew they would not be able to do it unless it was forced down and paddled back like they're doing with the southern portion of Africa. And there are so many sonic anomalies in the waters, just in the waters alone. It's obvious something is up. As you can see, there are TTAs that line the entire southern portion of Africa. I knew that this kind of storm, this kind of levitation, would need help from places like Antarctica and Africa and Asia and satellite TTA technology. And I knew that if ISS flew over during that time that we would be able to see a TTA plane from the Antarctic. Lo and behold, up from the Antarctic, just as we saw on Mimic, this TTA plane going all the way up, all the way up west of Australia.